website, um, they actually have released a bunch of their packages on Conda, which makes install at least like of these pre <laughs> pre-compiled packages a lot easier. Oh no, that's not it. I have to go to documentation. Ionic should be the last one and definitely going to make this a bit bigger. Install in Windows, binary Windows install. Current Windows support exper experimental. Yes, it is. <laughs> but it's like I'm still man managed to get something to work, so it's like not that experimental anymore. And here they kind of like say like, oh, you have to install uh, install Conda, activate the environment, and then you have to install each of the packages one by one based on, let's say, I think it was the there was the let's say a list of which versions of the gazebo package you had to install. So I'm um, where, yeah, there's the higher level one. So then you would just say lib uh, conda add lib jc dash she make four. And then you have to add all of these, like, you know, in the command line by hand, which is doable, but a lot of hands on work. But luckily there is this package manager called Pixie where I've added all of these conda packages of Conda Forge right here in this file. So, and that also is really nice because then you're able to make two environments, one that has Gazebo Ionic and one that has Gazebo Harmonic. And that is actually quite easy. I will just like show you how that actually runs. So you have Pixie run, and then I'll, let's do Harmonic and then JC Sim server, because if I don't do that, they will get an error still. Oh no! <laughs> I changed something to the to the Pixie file, so I had this coming. So here it says uh, now that the Pixie environment has been installed. Uh, it says like uh, ingn gazebo. Well, it should be uh, JC sim. Only works with the dash s argument on Windows. Dash s is headless version of gazebo. So that means is that, okay, then I have to do this uh, S and then you see a little bit of a warning, unable to parse, but that's okay. Let's open up a separate Pixie or a separate oh, PowerShell should be fine. And then run, because like now the headless version is, is running. So I have to open up the GUI version of Gazebo that actually shows shows the actual simulator itself. So. Yeah, uh, that's so harmonic, I think. We'll see. Sim and then GUI. Cool, cool, cool. So this is this is Gazebo running natively on Windows through Conda, like the Conda packages, uh, which I've installed using the Pixie package manager for Conda. So there's nothing here right now, but it runs pretty smoothly. I would say, I'm not sure if that's like how smoothly it is on the stream, but sm smoothly enough. That's <laughs> at least my NVIDIA graphics card is working on it. Oh, you could actually see when I was. Uh <laughs> so, uh, so that's, th so that's pretty cool. And maybe as an, an example to show you how, like how janky it is actually on, on, uh, the Windows sub system for Linux, which I'm going to start right now should be installed by standards. Last final words. Hello. Last time when I worked, uh, when I did this, uh, it also showed that my uh, Nvidia graphics card was also uh, acting. So maybe they have made some improvements with WSL2. Okay. So the problem here is that I'm not able to resize it. This is actually because you were running from WSL and I'm not able to resize it. I am able to make it big, but I'm not able to play any, uh, put any of the screens right next to each other. So that's, that's just a bit too bad. And yeah, it's maybe difficult for you to see, but I kind of, I definitely feel that the the zoom in is not as great. I'm not sure, like in terms of the well, the the real time feature is better, but it's definitely like in terms of graphics, I'm not happy. at least it's not the black screen, which a lot of people were saying on because he were running from WSL2 that they always saw the um, black screen and they had to change like some of the render to Wayland things like that. Interesting though, is that this is actually the first time that I've seen it, is that both my GPU on NVIDIA and, a and the Radeon is also being active, but mostly this one right here. The annoying thing is, is that I have less control of what happens in a WSL2. And that is saying that I can only tell my computer 
for instance, go to this graphic graphic setting on Windows 11, you can say per per program which one you want to use, like the maximum for. So, for instance, I have Blender, well, high performance, obviously, but for WSL2, then you would gonna only say like, okay, I want you to give high performance to everything that opens up from WSL2, and maybe you want to have a bit more control over that. Now I'm able to do that. At least Gazebo on native Windows install is called Ruby. <laughs> it's run by Ruby. So if, if I select that to be high performance, that works as well. But it's it's just like I just got this uh, working last yesterday. <laughs> Not yesterday, Monday. So there's definitely a lot more digging into here, but it's an interesting thing. Okay, let's close Gazebo on the Windows subsystem for Linux, because we don't want to do that. Go back to Windows. Um, oh yeah, so there's there's still some errors when you close off when you close off Gazebo on Windows. So, and then actually, I had Harmonic also running as well. Okay, so this is the Harmonic environment, which is actually the version before Ionic, which is the long-term release version. Which I think they've also mentioned that here as well. If you go to the documentation. They also kind of recommend you to install Gazebo Harmonic. So that is that is just the way things are. But that's okay. So I actually will going to show everything here on Gazebo Ionic, but it's at least nice to change environments just like that. So you can just change environment like Ionic, or you can, for instance, add this as default, which I now put Ionic as default, which you don't have to constantly type in the environment here, you can just re remove this and just say, ah, okay, just run Gazebo in headless mode. And this will be Gazebo Ionic. And if you don't believe me, I'll uh, I will show it to you in a bit. And I think you can kind of like see that in about, about, there you go, Gazebo Ionic. Yeah, so let's start up this model. So what I first have to do, and you have to do that with every Gazebo uh, installation, and if you have your own, let's say, model, if you made your own model or something like that, you always have to set the model path into like a, a specific definition or environment variable. So I'm now in PowerShell. I'm actually going to go out of PowerShell because I haven't in I haven't, haven't done anything for, how do you say, I haven't enabled PowerShell to run any scripts, just for, I guess, safety purposes. So I'm just going to open up command prompt. It's going to be a bit slower, but that's fine. And I'm going to, and then you can set a environment variable with set, and then it's gazebo sim resource path, which is, here's my models with my two models right here, and the crazy fly one, and I'm going to copy the full path and do it right here. Should just work, right? Then pixie run gazebo sim server and that should already be Yannick by default. All right, nothing's happening because it is gazebo. And then I don't have to set the environment variable for the terminal that actually has the GUI running in it to it because the server already has the model. So that should all demo effect inactive. All right. I don't see. Oh, of course. One moment. Let me just close it off because I want to, of course, open up the world. And that's a different, like, you know, Gazebo doesn't know that by heart, of course, if you if you know the world. So Gazebo and then world uh, backslash that doesn't exist on this keyboard. <laughs> World, keyboard, crazy fly world, which is this one right here, which is just like a simple empty world with the right plugins to make it fly. And ground plane, so it doesn't fall through the floor. And yeah, and of course the GUI so that you can actually see. And the crazy fly model is right here. This is the the crazy fly model that's that existing right. Here. All right, cool, cool, cool. Where are you, Gazebo? And now I can change the size of my of my gazebo window everywhere oh my god <laughs> how liberating <laughs> and you can also make it very small oh like i guess like i i care 
a bit about this. Uh, <laughs> I care a little bit too much about this. So this is like the the, the crazy flame model, a small quadcopter that's made by uh, that actually exists in real life. It's um, so you can actually buy it, but this is just so let's fly. So Tele op is a plugin that you can actually run here right in Gazebo. That's awesome. And luckily I know the Gazebo topic by heart, but for demonstration purposes, I will also show you how you can actually show the Gazebo topics from the command uh, prompt. So you can just double check. So Pixie run GC topics list. Or is it topic? It's probably topic, yeah. But it's more topic stuff. Oh no! <laughs> sure, you can have access to my network. <laughs> all right, cool. So, okay, so you see here all the gazebo topics that is uh, available for in the gazebo simulation network. So you can, I can either like do it from here and controls from uh, the terminal, but I don't really want to. I just want to have the one that I can actually control the speeds of the crash fly by itself, which is the multicopter velocity plugin. So twist, there you go. And let's back up for a little bit. Demo effect. Ah, <laughs> it flies. <laughs> oh God. Okay. You believe me now. <laughs> yeah. I, like it wasn't that I was worried, but last time it was the one and fly. And I was like, why? <laughs> I was really starting to doubt myself, but now I actually prepared this, uh, this twitch a little bit. So yeah, now I cheated. Cheating gets you in some places, but although I was hoping for a more of a developer type of experience, but that's fine. See, the I think what what I would suggest for instance people to also work on is that Webots is an other robotic simulator has a really nice feature that if the propellers are rotating such a fast pace, that it will actually replace the propellers with just a disc. That you can like make make it show like like a like a shining disc or something like that, which is a little bit more realistic. But at least like now you know for sure it's it's, it's but it's um, yeah. And there's no wind in the environment. It's a little bit perfectly still, <laughs> but you can run it forward, backwards. Unfortunately, you can see that it's dropping, and hence that's why we need to have that special ROS to control outside control one. Unfortunately, this is also an issue that exists with the X3 and X4 quadcopter models in Gazebo, which is a standard example of quadcopter examples that Gazebo has. As soon as you go forward with a faster speed than one meter per second, it will also drop. And definitely, if you're rotating as well which is very slow i unfortunately didn't really have the time to oh i lost it again move to <laughs> move to fortunately didn't really have like i i've tried to kind of like fix it and i have like a control tuning plugin for the multi-velocity uh plugin specifically I haven't gone around to actually finish it because like controlling or tuning the controller with changing something into the other FL as the FL and then starting the simulator again. That is just like you need you need slide players for that. So definitely something to fix. But luckily there's ROS, so you can do also do it externally as well. Mm -hmm.